We know that during the three weeks, there are three special haftoiris read, which are called haftoiris of Puranus, of rebuke and punishment. In this particular sicha, the Rebbe is going to be discussing the connection between the haftoir of Parshas Pinchas that starts with the words Divrei Yirmiyo with Parshas Pinchas. Now the Rebbe says, the Medrash actually says, speaks about a connection between Pinchas and Yirmiyo, that both of them were denigrated, were put down by the Yidin, because each one of them came, their lineage came from a non-Jewish woman. Pinchas coming from Bas Putiel, Putiel being Yisroi, Yirmiya coming from Rachav. And so the Yidin had put them down, the Yidin had made fun of them, and the Abishter therefore goes and speaks about their great lineage, Pinchas ben Aaron Akoy, ben Allah ben Aaron Akoyin, and so to Yirmiyo min Akoyanim, etc. But obviously, the Rebbe says, there must be a deeper and more general connection between the idea of Yirmiyo and Pinchas, and this detail that the Yidin made fun of them, and Hashem spoke about their great Yichus, is only the expression of a more general inner connection and common denominator between them, which will explain to us why we read this Haftoira on Parshas Pinchas. We also need to understand, says the Rebbe, the beginning of the Haftoira to being one of the Haftoiras of the three weeks. And that is, yes, in the end of the Haftoira it speaks about the idea of Churban, but the whole beginning of the Nevuah, the beginning of, of Yirmiya, where it discusses how Yirmiya actually became a Novi. Hashem tells Yirmiya that I knew you even before you were formed in your mother's womb. I appointed you as a Novi. Yirmiya starts saying to Hashem, I don't know how to speak. I'm still very young. Hashem tells him not to worry. I appointed you over the Goyim. Only at the very end of the Aftoida, we also speak about the Nevoah, about the Churban, and that's why it is the Aftoida of one of the three weeks. But why is the whole beginning relevant to the three weeks? The Rebbe explains, what is really that general connection between Pinchas and Yirmiya? Is both of them were in a period where the Yidin were spiritually in a very, very low state. In the time of Pinchas, the Yidin were then sitting with the daughters of Moyov and with the Avoy de Zorah called Pa'oyer. So too, in the times of Yirmiya, there was a situation with the Nevi'e Abal, prophets for the Avoy de Zorah called Baal. Generally, Yidin were in a very, very lowly status at the time of the Churban Beis Hamikdash. And each one of them is inspiring the Yidin to do tshuva. Yirmiya in his way through saying words of rebuke. Pinchas by going ahead and killing Zimri, which as a result of that, the Yidin saw what happened. They knew that Pinchas was right. And the Yidin do tshuva. So both of them bring the Yidin to do tshuva. But obviously this idea of bringing Yidin to do tshuva is not unique to Pinchas and Yirmiya, because this was by many, many of the Yiddish leaders and especially by the Nevi and by the prophets. The common denominator between Pinchas and Yirmiya, says the Rebbe, is really in the way they went about it and the style of tshuva. The Rebbe is soon going to explain that there is a Malmailo Lamato approach and a Malmato Lamailo approach, as we will soon see. But first, the Rebbe says, we know that the Gemara says that Yirmiya Kulei Chorbon is all about destruction. On the other hand, Yeshaya is Kulei Nechemta is all about comfort. And the difference why that is, Yirmiya and Yeshaya, the free the Rebbe says in a Sicha, that Yirmiya was in a time of the Chiyah of Hester, in a time where the Yidin were, so to speak, being abandoned or pushed away, a time of concealment, as mentioned before, this is the time of the Churban Beis HaMikdash. Yeshaya is during the time of the Beis HaMikdash. It's a time of Giluyim, of Gilealikus. And therefore, the method of how Yeshaya, even when he says Musar, there's more of an emphasis on Geula, how it's all going to, if you act in the right way, it's going to bring the Geula, and eventually Yidin will have the Geula in the Beis HaMikdash. Whereas Yirmiya is more focusing on the lowliness of the time, it's a time of concealment, there's more of an emphasis that if you don't do Tshuva, there will be the Churban and the Golas, etc. Says the Rebbe, this is then also the connection to Pinchas, that he too, the way he brings about the Kapor of Bnei Yisroel, is more in a little bit of that harsher way, not in a way of giluyim, but rather by killing Zimri and bringing Yidin to do tshuva, as again we'll soon see more in a mulmatolamayla type of approach. But in order to explain this, the Rebbe first focuses on something else. We know that Pinchas, as a result of removing Hashem's anger of the Bnei Yisroel, he gets the kahuna, a bris oilam, a covenant from Hashem forever, kahuna for himself and his children for all generations. And the Rebbe asks, why don't we find something similar by Moshe Rabbeinu, who removed Hashem's anger many times? 
And in fact, when he wants his children to take over in this week's Parsha and Parsha, Pinchas Chazal tell us, Hashem doesn't give it to him. Hashem gives it to Yeshua. Says the Rebbe, the difference between Avoid of Moshe and Pinchas, which will lead us to understand why Pinchas is rewarded with this everlasting reward. So we know that Moshe Rabbeinu removed Hashem's anger mainly through his tefillos. It's more of a melmaila lamata type of approach. Moshe davens to Hashem and he causes that Hashem should just remove the decree. Pinchas, on the other hand, does it through his own avoid of killing Zimri. And more importantly, he's bringing that the Yidden should do tshuva. Another difference between Moshe and Pinchas. Moshe has mesidas nefesh for the Yidden. He says, if you don't forgive the Yidden, erase me from the Sefer Torah. But this is more of a ruchni, is the neshama type of mesidas nefesh. Pinchas, on the other hand, puts his life on the line to go kill Zimri, Mesiras Nefesh of the Guf. In fact, Shevet Shimon wanted to kill him, and the Abish had to cause miracles that Pinchas should be saved. What is, what, what's the cause for these differences between Moshe and Pinchas? That's again because Moshe's Avoida was more a Melmaila Lamato approach. It's about revealing Torah, bringing Gilead and Likus in the world, and Torah automatically, the light of Torah pushes away the darkness. Pinchas, on the other hand, is more of a mulmata lamaila from above to from below to above approach. It's about elevating and dealing with the lowliness of the world, refining and elevating the goof and the world itself. So Moshe's avoid the more mulmaila lamata is more of a neshamadika approach. Pinchas, on the other hand, the mulmata lamaila is more of a goof type of approach. And therefore, again, Moshe, through his tefillah, causes that Hashem should re- remove the gzeirah. That's a mulmaila lamato idea. Pinchas causes the Yidin to do tshuva. We said by Moshe Rabbeinu, his mesiras nefesh is more of a neshama dika type of approach. Mesiras nefesh. Whereas Pinchas, again, his mesiras nefesh is with his guf. Now we can understand why Pinchas is the one that gets the bris of kuhunas oilam kuhuna for himself and his children forever and not Moshe. Because when the gilui, when it's an oil that's coming from above, as soon as the oil is removed, not necessarily the world was changed. It's not necessarily an everlasting impact. Whereas if it is coming because of the lowliness of the world, the world, the world itself being changed, this is automatically going to last in a much longer way. It says that but now we can also understand the connection between Pinchas and Yirmiya. As we said before, that Yirmiya is in a time of concealment, it's at a time when you need to deal with the lowliness of the world, trying to fix and elevate the lowliness of the world, the guf and the nefesh of Bahamas, or generally the idea of not being the spoil, not being impacted by the difficulties and the siyonis of Golos, in the same way how Pinchas is also trying to deal with that lowliness and the darkness of the time of what's going on. And this is really the connection to what we said before, that Pinchas and Yirmi are both in their own avoid they had to deal with the situation where they came from lineage, which was not even Jewish, and yet they're not in the spoil, they're not impacted on this. They're not even impacted by the fact that the Yidin are going to make fun of them. Rather, they take all of that and transform it into a positive, transforming the negativity and the darkness into light. Says the Rebbe the Hoiro over here is, there are some people that deal more with the Neshama, with things of oil, of light. They're involved in Torah, in Tfilah, in holy things. But they're not ready and prepared to deal with transforming, elevating the goof and the world around us. They might be ready to even deal with their goof and nefesh Bahamis sometimes, but not ready to deal with people that are very far on the outside. But this avoid is not necessarily going to last. It's all going to be very nice when you're sitting in your own Daladamas learning Torah and davening. But if you're suddenly going to have to deal with the world, then in that case, not only aren't you going to elevate the world, it may end up schlepping you down. And therefore, we need to deal also with the outside world and to deal, to elevate the world, to transform the world into a place of Kedusha. And this is also the connection of why we read this in the time of Bein Amtsarim, the time that the Abish just sent us into Golos, but it's all about to transform and elevate the Golos into oil, into light. And now we're going to understand the connection to the beginning of the Aftoid of how Hashem appoints Yirmi as a Novi. Because a Yid could come and complain, how is it possible to really deal with this darkness? And not only I shouldn't be impacted by the darkness, I should even transform it into light. Comes along the beginning of the Aftoira, before dealing with the punishment and the Churban, and tells us the story of Yirmiya. He was worried of becoming a Navi. Hashem promises, I'm going to give you, I give you all the Koichas. Hashem says to Yirmiya, even before I formed you, I knew you. 
before you came out of your mother's womb, I appointed you already, I sanctified you and appointed you as a Navi. So too the Abishta says to the Neshama of every Yid and to every Yid down here, you have a holy Neshama, a Chelik Alikami Ma'al Mamash. It comes from a place that's way higher than the Gullahs, that's way higher than all of the negativity in the world. And not only that, but the Nisham is taught all of Torah before it, it entered the world. Comes along here, me and says, but I don't know how to talk. I'm still very young. I'm a little boy. And that's the Nisham also saying, that, oh, it's all very nice that deep down I have all of the Torah. And for the Nisham, that might be enough. Maybe I could sit and learn Torah and not be so impacted of the world. But on the revealed level, I'm still a young boy. I don't have the koichas to deal with the world, to become a novi, to impact the world, to be mashpia on my nefesh of Bahamas, on the world around me, etc. Says Hashem to Yirmiya, don't say you're a little boy. You're going to go wherever I send you. Don't be afraid of them. I'm going to be with you. And that's the same thing with the neshama and the guf. That yes, even though we are in a lowly guf and in a gullus, etc., the Eivishter gives us the koyachis to influence the nefesh of Bahamas and the world around us, and through that we will be zoicha. As we know that Pinchas is Eliyahu, he'll be Mavasa, the Geula, and Bias HaMashiach immediately right now.